And it's not easy when you have kids at home to maintain that work-life balance, especially if you have other projects you want to do as well. So in my life, what comes first? Well, of course, my kids come first. My husband's a priority too. I'm, I'm married and my career is a very important to me as well. So juggling all those things is easier said than done. Sometimes the outside picture, I call it the highlight reel on social media, while it may be all together, it's the inside that's not. So what I want to do today is talk about something that I've come up with, and it is the four key categories. If you're aware of what's going on in those categories, you can catch something before it gets to the point where you didn't even know but you needed therapy, or in my case, um, you didn't even know but you were affecting your children adversely. Part of the problem is that we strive to do everything 100% and we don't feel like we're doing anything the way we want to. Everyone has goals and sets them and wants to achieve them. So why wouldn't someone achieve them? Well, not everyone has the road map to get there. I mean, I had the, the address to get here today, but unless GPS told me how to go or I had a map, I couldn't just hope to get there. So I thought, boy, I think I kind of came up with a road map to get to goals. Not that other people haven't, but I had this, I kind of brainstormed and wrote some ideas down and I'm like, I think I have something I can share with people because I've done this over and over and that's why I'm here today and that's why I call it my one goal strategy. So this is the formula that I came up with and these are the four categories in life that you want to make sure that if you've got something in these categories that is not in the right place where that ball isn't just like not going very high, it's like long gone like my house was, you want to be aware of it and then you want to take the steps, the one goal steps to fix it. One of the reasons that I'm sharing my story today is there are so many parents beating themselves up over how they're handling things in life, all kinds of different things, sometimes multiple things. and. I want to stop that guilt of, oh, I don't do this good enough, I don't do that good enough, oh, look at her, she's, that, she's, she's got a bigger house, oh, look at her, she's got a better wardrobe. Um, I want the voice in the head to be thinking about the solution. What's the one goal that you should be working on and what's the solution that's going to get you there or series of solutions? So how would you know that you have something in your life that requires your one goal focus? And how would you possibly have time in your busy life to do anything about it, right? But it can be the difference between happiness and discontent, between health and feeling lousy, between energy and exhaustion. So finding that goal and fulfilling it can make a big difference in our life, even if it's not life or death. You are going to reveal through this process something that's been weighing on your mind even if you've been pushing it to the back of your mind. So that one goal is something that is dragging you down the way my cluttered house was. And it was beyond cluttered, it was dysfunctional. So that one goal is something that you wanna work on. It may not be as detrimental as that house was to me, but it's something missing that you wanna work on. Now you'd be surprised how the world can come to your aid when you let others know what you need. It's like the law of attraction. So you don't have to reveal it, but if you kinda start to tell people, post about it, then, then all of a sudden things will appear. If you really want to lose weight but you're having a problem saying no to junk food and your coworkers know it, they may stop bringing in donuts every Friday and setting them on your desk, right? <laughs> you know, hey, they're like, oh, you know what? She says she's on a diet, so I'm not gonna do that to her, okay? If you feel there's no spontaneity or adventure in your life and your spouse finds out you feel that way, they may surprise you by finding a sitter one Saturday night and taking you to the place where you met for a romantic dinner, even when it's not your anniversary. So let the world know and you'd be surprised how the world responds when they know you have that goal. So in the final few minutes, I wanna share my formula for achieving your one goal. And this is after listening to literally thousands of hours of motivational books and courses in the car from Illinois to Wisconsin for 15 years. So there are tons and tons of books and CDs and podcasts and, and audiobooks and all of that out there about this, but I've kind of distilled it together to, to give you, and these are all proven theories that, that work. So what is the formula first? You pick one area that I mentioned that you know is not where it should be. 
you determine what you can do to fix it and you write it down. This is factually, scientifically proven. The act of putting your goal in writing is the first step and helps you get there. Even if you think about it every day, it's more impactful if you write it down. Be specific. Do share your goal with others. It does keep you accountable. Tell a family member or friend, join a Facebook group, find a life coach. And if you really, if this is a private goal that you know you need to work on but you don't want to admit it to anyone, keep a journal. So write down for yourself to keep you accountable and write down the steps that you plan to take. So when you are going to achieve your one goal, it's going to be the first thing you think about when you open your eyes every morning. Okay? Not like, don't, don't start with the to-do list and all that stuff, no. Now it's not in that aching way that reminds you of something in your life that you hate. It's in that rejuvenating way, that sense of new possibilities. Okay? The way you felt when you were pregnant and so excited for the birth of your baby, right? Every day you woke up, you thought about that baby, okay? This is the gestation phase of your new life, okay? So to stay motivated, you must take at least one meaningful step towards your goal every single day. We want five steps that you can take one at a time over the next week or two. And they can be little tiny steps. For instance, if, you're, if, you, if losing weight is your goal, you could do these five things. Keep a food journal. There's proof that that helps. Even if you don't change your eating, just writing it down. Track your calories. You can do that with apps. Track your steps with a Fitbit. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Not if you're going to a 20-story building, but maybe second, third, fourth floor. Um, cut out the pop and all the other drinks except water. Those would be your five, right? I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. Simple is different than easy. Make it simple. Keep it simple and then do put in the work to try to achieve that. The important thing is to take one step every day towards that goal, even if it's a tiny step. And the more you write those things down, the more likely you are to do them. And don't ever take a day off. Never, ever, ever. Of course, this is impossible, right? <laughs> of course it is. So you tell yourself you won't miss a day, and you recognize that you will, and then you don't beat yourself up over it, right? Because we know we're not perfect, and we can't do things 100%. Only one day, that's the most you can skip on, on track to your goal. So letting two days pass, not allowed. You're just going to have to get a little less sleep. You know, if you realize, oh, I didn't do anything for my goal yesterday. Okay, I'm going to spend 10 minutes doing something right now, looking up this thing online or something before I go to bed. So while you're focusing on your one goal, you have to keep all the other balls in the air. That's the tricky part. But you don't have to keep them in the air perfectly. You just have to reduce the effort of all those other things. Like I said, once a month instead of once a week um, without dropping one completely. You sneak in snippets of time if you're really busy. Turn off the TV or the computer or that cell phone we're always looking at, right? Hire a maid if you're, if you're too busy because you got too much cleaning to do. See your friends once a month instead of every week. And then utilize that time wisely by taking meaningful steps. So my goal today, okay, was to bring some clarity to you. I hope I've done that. And I want you to have, I'm going to give you a way to have more tips like this in the future. The next time you're on YouTube, you can do this on your phone or on the computer, go to YouTube and search Working Mom Warrior and subscribe, the red subscribe button right under the video on the right hand side. And you'll see um, more tips and ideas from my YouTube channel. So the struggle to juggle is always going to be there, right? But if you know you have control enough to change what's wrong or missing, your glass is suddenly half full instead of half empty. And that will bring fulfillment to your life. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you. And on behalf of Mirabel, Indiana a APC chapter, we'd like to give you a certificate of appreciation and then you have a little gift in the bag. Oh, thank you wow. so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.